bearings were worn, click clank as he puffed along. He was taking 20 empty cattle trucks to a market town. The sun shone, the birds sang. And some cows grazed in a field by the line. Come on, come on, come on, puffed Edward. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Edward puffed and ticked. The trucks rattled and screamed. The cows were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. They twitched up their tails and ran. They galloped across the field, broke through the fence, and charged the train between the 13th and 14th trucks. The coupling broke, and the last seven trucks left the rails. They were not damaged, and stayed upright. They ran for a short way along the sleepers before stopping. Edward felt a jerk, but didn't take much notice. He was used to trucks. station before either he or his driver realized what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and laughed. Fancy allowing cows to break his train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them. They boasted. Edward pretended not to mind. But Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward, he said. They've never met cows. I have. And I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Wendell Station. Doop, doop, he whistled. Find the cows. Ha, 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 in the distance was a bridge. It had high parapets each side. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Oh, Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Pooh, said Gordon. It's only a cow. Shoo, shoo, he hissed, moving slowly onto the bridge. But the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, mm, she said sadly, walking towards him. Gordon stopped. His driver, Farman, and some passengers tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go, so they gave it up. Presently, Henry arrived with a train from the other direction. What's this? he said grandly. A cow! I'll soon settle her. Be off! Be off! He hissed, but the cow turned and mooed at him. Henry backed away. I don't want to hurt her, he said. Drivers, farmer and passengers again tried to move the cow. wailed the calf. Moo, moo, bellow Bluebell. She nuzzled her calf happily, and the porter led them away. The two trains started. Not a word, keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry as they passed. The story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines, afraid of one cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon huffily. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running against us. 
abruptly stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, uh, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward gravely. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. sang the farmer. Johnny, so long it. Never you mind about Johnny, laughed the driver. Just you climb on the cab and look for Thomas. Can you see him? Oh. The guard looked at his watch. Ten minutes late, he said to the driver. We can't wait here all day. Look again, Sid, said the driver. Just in case. The farmer got to his feet. Can you see him? No, he answered. There's Bertie Bus in a tearing hurry. No need to bother with him, no. Likely he's on a coach tour or something. He clambered down. Right away, Charlie, to the guard, and Edward puffed off. wailed Bertie, roaring into the yard. But it was no good. Edward's last coach had disappeared into the tunnel. Bother, said Bertie. Bother, Thomas's farm and not coming to work today. Oh, why did I promise to help the passengers catch the train? That will do, Bertie, said his driver. A promise is a promise, and we must keep it. Edward all bust, said Bertie grimly, as he raced along the road. Oh, my gears and axles, he groaned, toiling up the hill. I'll never be the same bus again. Toot, toot, I see him. Hooray, hooray, he cheered as he reached the top of the hill. He's reached the station, Bertie groaned the next minute. No! He stopped by a signal. Hooray! Hooray! And he tore down the hill, his brakes squealing at the corners. His passengers bounced like balls in a bucket. Well done, Bertie, they shouted. Go it! Go it! Hens and dogs scattered in all directions as he raced through the village. Wait! Wait! He tooted, skidding into the yard. He was just in time to see the signal drop. The guard waved his flag and Edward puff out of the station. His passengers rushed to the platform, but it was no good, and they came bustling back. Oh, I'm sorry, said Bertie unhappily. Never mind, Bertie, they said. After him, quickly. Third time lucky, you know. Do you think they'll catch him at the next station driver? There's a good chance, he answered. Our road keeps close to the line and we can climb hills better than Edward. He thought for a minute. I'll just make sure. He then spoke to the station master, while the passengers waited impatiently in the bus. Oh. This hill is too steep, this hill is too steep, grumbled the coaches as Edward snorted in front. smoothly into the station. Beep, beep, whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. The porters and people hurried, and Edward impatiently waited to start. Beep, whistled the guard, and Edward's driver looked back. But the flag didn't wave. There was a distant toot, and the station master, running across, snatched the green flag out of the guard's hand. Then everything seemed to happen at once. Toot, toot, toot! bellowed Bertie. 
His passengers poured onto the platform and scrambled into the train. The station master told the guard and driver what had happened. And Edward listened. Oh, I'm sorry about the chase, Bertie, he said. My fault, panted Bertie. Late at junction, you didn't know about Thomas's passengers. Beep, beep. Goodbye, Bertie. We're off, whistled Edward. Three cheers for Bertie, called the passengers. They cheered and waved till they were out of sight. There is a scrapyard near Edward Station. It is full of rusty old cars and machinery. They are brought there to be broken up. The pieces are loaded into trucks, and Edward pulls them to the steelworks, where they are melted down and used again. One day, Edward saw a traction engine in the yard. Hello, he said. You're not broken and rusty. What are you doing there? I'm Trevor said the traction engine sadly. They're going to break me up next week. What a shame, said Edward. My driver says I only need some paint, brasso and oil to be as good as new, Trevor went on sadly. But it's no good. My master doesn't want me. I suppose it's because I'm old-fashioned. Edward snorted indignantly. People say I'm old-fashioned, but I don't care. The fat controller says I'm a useful engine. My driver says I'm useful too, replied Trevor. I sometimes feel ill, but I don't give up like these tractors. I struggle on and finish the job. I've never broken down in my life, he ended proudly. What work did you do? asked Edward kindly. My master would send us from farm to farm. We threshed the corn, hauled logs, sawed timber, and did lots of other work. We made friends at all the farms, and saw them every year. The children loved to see us come. They followed us in crowds, and watched us all day long. My driver would sometimes give them rides. Trevor shut his eyes, remembering. I like children, he said simply. Oh, yes. I like children. Broken up, what a shame, broken up, what a shame, clanked Edward as he went back to work. I must help Trevor, I must. He thought of the people he knew who liked engines. Edward had lots of friends, but strangely, none of them had room for a traction engine at home. It's a shame, it's a shame. He hissed as he brought his coaches to the station. Then, beep, beep, he whistled. Why didn't I think of him before? Waiting there on the platform was the very person. Morning, Charlie. Morning, Sid. Hello, Edward. You look upset. What's the matter, Charlie? He asked the driver. There's a traction engine in the scrapyard, Vicar. He'll be broken up next week, and it's a shame. Jem Cole says he never drove a better engine. Do save him, sir. You've got room, sir. Yes, Edward. I've got room, laughed the Vicar. But I don't need a traction engine. He'll saw wood and give children rides. Do buy him, sir, please. We'll see, said the vicar, and climbed into the train. Jem Cole came on Saturday afternoon. The reverend's coming to see you, Trevor. Maybe he'll buy you. Do you think he will? Asked Trevor, hopefully. 
He will when I've lit your fire and cleaned you up, said Jim. When the vicar and his two boys arrived in the evening, Trevor was blowing off steam. He hadn't felt so happy for months. Watch this, reverence, called Jim. And Trevor chuffed happily about the yard. pleaded the boys, jumping up and down in their excitement. Now I'll try. And the vicar climbed up beside Jim. Show your paces, Trevor, he said, and drove him about the yard. Then he went into the office and came out smiling. I've got him cheap, Jim, cheap. Do you hear that, Trevor, cried Jim. The Reverend saved you and you'll live at the vicarage now. Boop, boop, whistled Trevor happily. Will you drive him home for me, Jim, and take these scallywags with you? They won't want to come in the car when there's a traction engine to ride on. Trevor's home in the vicarage orchard is close to the railway and he sees Edward every day. His paint is spotless and his brass shines like gold. He soars firewood in winter and Jim sometimes borrows him when a tractor fails. Trevor likes doing his old jobs but his happiest day is the church fete. Then with a long wooden seat bolted to his bunker he chuffers round the orchard, giving rides to children. Long afterwards, you will see him shut his eyes, remembering, I like children. He whispers happily. One day, James had to wait at Edward's station until everything was done. This made him cross. Late again, he shouted. Edward only laughed, and James fumed away.
hardly reach the top of Gordon's Hill. He could hardly stand. The farmer drove the train to the next station. He spoke to the signalman, put the trucks in a siding, and untuckled James when he was shouting. Then he helped the driver over to the station and asked them to look after him and find a relief. Suddenly the signalman shouted, and the farmer turned round and saw James puffing away. He ran hard, but he couldn't catch James, and soon came back to the signal box. The signalman was busy. All traffic halted, he announced at last. Up and down main lines are clear for 30 miles, and the inspector's coming. The farmer mopped his face. What happened? he asked. Two boys were on the footplate. They tumbled off when James started. I shouted at them and they ran like rabbits. Just let me catch them, said the farmer grimly. I'll teach them to meddle with my engine. Both men jumped as the telephone rang. Yes, answered the signalman. He's here. Right, I'll tell him. The inspector's coming at once in Edward. He wants a shunter's pole and a coil of wire rope. What for? wondered the farmer. Search me. But you better get them quickly. The farmer was ready and waiting when Edward arrived. The inspector saw the pole and rope. Good man, he said. Jump in. <coughs> we'll catch him. We'll catch him. Puffed Edward, crossing to the upline in pursuit.
called a cat man. But when Edward came home the other day, James Bond arrangements gave him a try. Thinks he'll be deaf for weeks. <laughs> <laughs>